Okay, let's take a look at this partial fraction decomposition question. We have x minus 12 on top of x squared plus 3x minus 18. The first step in the process is to focus your attention on the denominator. And in that denominator, we have to identify how it decomposes. How does it factor? Does it factor? And so check to see first if the degree of the denominator is more than the degree of the numerator. And when it is, then you can start your partial fraction decomposition method. So it is, and you can start it. So how does that denominator factor? This is the one where it's going to just factor. It's x plus 6 and x minus 3. These are linear factors. And so when it comes to decomposition, they each get their own fraction with a constant up top. A, B, doesn't matter the order. You could rearrange that. Now it's your job to find the a and the b that makes this happen. You want to take your fraction, who's one fraction, and break it apart, unsimplify it into these two separate fractions. What are the a and b that make that happen? Well, in order to do that, what you do is imagine yourself then putting them back together. You've got to find the common denominator, and your job is to multiply by what you're missing from that common denominator. So the a fraction is missing the x minus 3, and the b fraction is missing the x plus 6. And now they have the same denominator, and you can add the numerators. And this gives you an equation. a times x minus 3 plus b times x plus 6 is equal to the original numerator, when you put it back together, of x minus 12. This is true for all x. And so what we can do is pick the x value smartly. There's a very good choice of x that you can use that will eliminate one of the variables. So you want to choose x equals negative 6, and then next choose x equals 3, or any order. And so um, because that will kill one of the variables, it'll be multiplied by 0, and then you'll just have to worry about the other one. If x is equal to negative 6, then the b times the quantity of x plus 6 will be zeroed out. You don't have to worry about b. You can get exactly what a is. So what you're doing is letting x equal the number that would make the denominator, or the, the term equal to zero. Not the denominator, it's not, we're focused on the numerators now. And so yeah, you just do that and it kills the other variable. And so that says that negative 9a is, is negative 18. So a must be 2. Do it again for x equal 3. It'll kill the a term, even though you know what a is. You, you can pick any x you want, but pick this x equals 3. So you don't have to worry about a at all. And you get the fact that 9b is negative 9. So you have to be very neat with this. Be very careful. Bookkeeping. It's like accounting. Very tedious. But once you're able to solve for these guys, then you put them back in. And you're able now to handle the integration. And so our job is to integrate this. And we want it to, uh, this is the one line of calculus, we have uh, 2 over x plus 6 minus 1 over x minus 3. These are just natural logs. Make sure you use absolute values though. And uh, one more thing I wanted to say I forgot about in the very beginning. Um, take a look at the bounds and make sure that um, where your denominator is equal to 0 at isn't involved at all in any part of your bounds. Um, technically then you'd be an improper integral. So um, uh, a negative 6 and a 3, your interval goes from 0 to 2. So there's the 3, and then later on down the line, down here is a negative 6. So your interval is fine. It doesn't um, have anything to do with those places where your function uh, has a discontinuity, basically. But from here on out, you need to take a look at that since we um, can now look at improper integrals. But anyway, here we go. 2 times natural log of x, um, x minus 6 and negative 1 times the natural, natural log of x minus 3. What we're going to do is uh, look at this in two different methods. So you're going to integrate for sure and get 2 times the natural log of x plus 6 minus the natural log of x minus 3 using absolute values, bars, and because uh, you know you can't take the natural log of a negative number. But um, in this approach what I want to do is put these logs together first. I'll show you the second approach where you can leave them separate and you can put um, put the logs together after plugging in. But here we are. Before plugging in the 2 and the 0, I'm going to put these logs together. 
Now these natural logs here can't be combined as they are. What we need is to um, get rid of that 2 first. That 2 has to come up and be the exponent on x plus 6 and then you can combine the logs into 1. Um, if the natural log of x minus 3 had a 2 on it then we could have combined them but not with different coefficients like that. So we put the 2 up using the log property and then we combine them. Log of a minus log of b is the log of a over b. And then we put a 2 in and we get 8 squared over negative 1. So technically that's a, a, eight, a 64 over negative 1. And then we put the 0 in and we get 36 over negative 3. But since I have absolute value bars, so it's the natural log of 64 minus the natural log of 12. And now we want to combine these, of course, into one fraction, one natural log um, by, by division, and then we can reduce. And so we have the natural log of 16 thirds when we divide out by 4. Okay, that's method 1 uh, when it comes to the integration, uh, or after the integration, actually, the algebra of uh, combining the logs. Uh, method 2 is on the next slide, and in that one we just... Uh, plug in the bounds and then combine the logs after. You choose whichever method you like. Um, I'm just going to show you both of them. Uh, here we go with the second one where we definitely get the same integration, but now we're going to combine the logs after plugging in. Put a 2 in, 2 log 8 minus 2 log 1, or technically negative 1. Put a 0 in, 2 log 6 minus 2 log 3, uh, minus log 3, sorry. And so then we're just going to plug in uh, and deal with the fact that uh, natural log of negative 1 is equal to 0. Um, it's absolute value bar, so that negative 1 becomes a 1. The negative 3 becomes a 3. And so then we have 2 log 8 minus 2 log 6. And then don't be careful here. It's got to be a plus log 3 because of the double minus there. Okay. And so combine the logs after plugging in the limits. So we've plugged in the limits and now we combine the logs. So 2 log 8 minus 2 log 6 plus the log 3. If we want this in one log, let's put these exponents, these put these coefficients up as exponents and then let's combine them. Anything after a minus is in the denominator, anything with the plus is in the numerator. So 8 squared times 3 all over 6 squared in one single log. And without a calculator, what you do is you just uh, just write them out in factors. So we have 8, 8, 3, and 6, and 6, and then we could cancel however you like. Uh, take the, take the um, 6 and turn that, um, get rid of that 3 and turn that 6 into a 2, and then uh, take this 2, turn the 8 into a 4, uh, take this, make it a 3, and turn this 8 into a 4. You get the same answer, natural log of 16 over 3. Um, yeah, no matter how you cancel it. And so, there you go. Two different approaches at the end of that. But uh, the key thing here is that we had uh, the denominator break up to only linear factors. In other examples, we'll deal with linear factors raised to a power, the level 2 kind of a way of decomposing, and then we'll also deal with an irreducible quadratic. But that's it for this one.